Welcome to the Scale Up Valley podcast, where we bring the best of the best to help you scale your business from 1 million to 1 trillion. Today, I have two guests, so and uh, two amazing people. Uh, it's with great pleasure that I welcome Pooja, the co-founder and CMO at Weasley, and Samir, the founder and CEO at Weasel. Um, at Weasley, sorry, Pooja and Samir, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great to have two founders uh, on the show, and uh, and we would love to get to know more about you and what you are doing. Both of you have amazing uh, track records in the in the venture uh, industry. Uh, Pooja, would you like to start uh, in introducing yourself? Sure. Um, so. My name is Pooja Barwani, and um, I started my career as a journalist uh, and then uh, got into the startup world about 10 years ago. Uh, started with um, helping founders craft their narrative. I think it is um, so important uh, how you say what you are creating to the market and not just to investors, to customers. So I was very involved uh, with that uh, from the early stages, and I'm fascinated by the whole space uh, of entrepreneurship, startups, um, media, tech in general. And, um, and then I entered the VC world uh, a couple of years ago with uh, Antler VC, uh, started very, I was one of the early uh, team members when they opened in Singapore. Uh, and that's when I met Samir uh, and Kapil uh, at Antler. Uh, they were one of the companies there. Um, and last year, uh, took the leap myself to uh, become a founder and build a tech startup. And it's 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 been uh, an, uh, almost a year since uh, we got together to build Wisley. And we're, we're at that stage now where the product is out in the world and uh, we're, we're out there, like you say, building um, and, and trying to grow at this stage. Love it. Uh, and Samir, feel free yeah, to thanks. introduce yourself as well. Sure, sure. Uh, thanks. Um, well, my I have a background of entrepreneurship for ages. I think I always introduce myself that the one thing that scares me is to take up a job, and so it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the uh, it's the driving force. Uh, uh, this is my third gig. Um, into the startup world and uh, having built uh, most of my previous startups are all B2B. Uh, this is pure getting more into the space, what I call as a marketplace and has a B2C angle. Um, that's the hypothesis of where I went into uh, with Antler, uh, considering the way they had been, um, uh, you know, the way they market, they help companies and, and it was very attractive to kind of go there and um, I was talking to the co-founder UC before going and kind of he gave me an amazing picture of what can be done. And uh, so that led to Antler, which is where I guess uh, uh, we got idea validations. And then in that process is where we had multiple discussions with Pooja uh, around the positioning and the marketing. And that kind of that got us to that, hey, we could do something much bigger. And so I said, hey, would you like to join the journey? So that's the brief intro of where I start from and what we are trying to build. That's amazing. So now we understand also how you guys uh, connected and, and why you are together building uh, Weasley. And uh, now that's the time to get to know about Weasley. So what is the story of Weasley? What is the purpose? What is the vision? Uh, what are you guys uh, doing? Sure. Uh, I guess the Wesley story started long back. I would say a few years back when, uh, you know, like, like I said, it's been a journey of building entrepreneurship. Uh, it's a tough journey. And you always figure out that uh, getting the right people, knowing the right connections, finding the right answers at the right time is like the most critical part for each and every entrepreneur in the world, whether VC backed or non VC backed. And, and it always felt overwhelming in all my journey that, you know, if especially people, some people like me, I'm sure there are out there many more who are a bit more introvert than extrovert, is like an obligation mm -hmm. to keep reaching out to people for help, for asking and connecting and networking and 
And, you know, I mean, I, I remember a few terms that people use networking junkies and so on and so forth, right? I mean, you have to do everything. <laughs> and at, at, at one point I was doing everything, but the only thing I had to do because my previous startup was in FNB and I had absolutely no clue what FNB stands for. So I had to do everything. I was going in events and I, I recall like events which had all the restauranteurs and hoteliers. And I'm like one idiot out there who is a techie. <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea <laughs> the terminologies they use in those events and you feel like, what the hell am I doing here? But you had to because you need the right connections to get there. And I think that paved the way that, okay, there are technology platforms from the likes of the LinkedIn and so on and so forth. But there is nothing that is very clear, transparent, democratized way from any professional to connect with the other. Even on LinkedIn, ultimately, I'm still putting a request. I might be accepted. I might not be accepted. The other person is not obliged to reply to me. So I think that's the whole purpose where we started thinking, hey, is this Wisley as is how Wisley is born? And I think, and then I shared it with my other co-founder, the first one that got in couple, and uh, he liked the idea and he, he had some similar experiences in his professional world because he was in jobs for 18 years. And, and he felt like the same thing because he's also a slightly introvert and he says, yeah, I, I, I sense that there is always this friction. And, and so that's the, uh, purpose of Wisley was like, how can we build a platform which is truly democratized and allows professionals, whether you are an entrepreneur, solopreneur, or someone working, to really find your ways out and find a solution uh, to your problems in a professional world, right? And yep. in a much meaningful, structured way, which is not obligatory, you're not getting spammed in either way. So that's, that's, the, that's the hypothesis how we started. And, and then we shared this vision with Pooja, and I think she had more layers to on top of it. So maybe I'll, I'll let Pooja add yeah, a few layers mean, on top. Because having worked with so many entrepreneurs and seen you know, all this technology, all these platforms, they're not streamlining, they're not concentrated, and they're not actually uh, making it simpler for people to meet the right person. The process is actually very manual. And as you know, LinkedIn is like shooting in the dark, right? Like it's spray right. and pray of, of connections because you don't know if people are actually going to respond to you. And what? Why should they, right? If people's time is valuable, and 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 they need, you know, uh, you either need to be connected through them through a warm intro or be part of um, some sort of community or network, which a lot of people are not part of because uh, also this whole group of people that are, you know, part of uh, a brick and mortar or. Um, or pre like or, or working in, in a very corporate world that want to enter tech um, it's not that easy to 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 just come in and try and, and meet the right people and and those conversations at the right time uh, really can be life-changing uh, and 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 like I said I, I used to see all these entrepreneurs trying to connect and it, it was just by the time they they caught a connection the idea had changed or they didn't really want it anymore so 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 that's uh, it, it's a very it, it, in, a, in a simple way what we're trying to build here is you know, uh, verified experts, real-time direct access and affordability. I mean, that's the main thing. If you look at all the other platforms that offer you um, uh, connections to experts, it takes weeks. The, the prices are like, you know, just crazy. A, a, a person is not going to be able to afford uh, that kind of price point. And, and at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's just simplification of the entire process. Why should it be so complicated to connect with the right person to, to get the right answer in this day and age, you know, with this much technology, this much um, connection. So it's it's boutique, it's focused, it's it's a vert. Think of it. Think of Wisley as this vertical search engine, almost uh, you know, for professionals. Love it. Uh, definitely a super important need, uh, especially for an entrepreneur, uh, as you both uh, mentioned. It. Uh, it can be very overwhelming to to be a founder. And I would say even any executive that is out there, there is so many things to do, so many things to to learn. Uh, if we are really growing quickly as uh, as professionals and human beings, uh, that's there is not enough uh, time to to go after everything and to search for everything and just understanding who to talk to. Uh, it, it's it's definitely a a great challenge. And and then getting access to the person, uh, I think that. I, it was Vern Arnish that I've been in touch with because of uh, the, the frameworks of, of scaling up. 
And he always gave the, the, the example that when he, need, he needed to know something, he would send uh, two or three emails to the people that he knows, uh, that knows more about that subject. And when, when the answer comes, for instance, what, what should be this CRM that I should use for this, this kind of uh, stage of company situation, vertical, et cetera. Mm -hmm. and if two or three of them would, would uh, send out the same answer back to him, uh, he would have the decision. So the, this kind of thought process is important. Um, definitely, I, I see the, the value. Great. And in terms of ICP um, or ideal customer profile for, for the ones uh, listening, um, is there any specific focus? Is, is this more for startups and scale-ups? Is it is this also for the corporate world? So who are you targeting? So for the startups, I would say early to mid-stage uh, founders that really need um, go-to-market um, product, product advice as well as uh, marketing in general and how to scale. Uh, and then, you know, they, they want to speak to heads of product, people who've launched and built products on a larger scale. And then we also have um, where we are B2C, right? At, at, at the end of the day, it's like we, we have professionals that um, minimum five to 12 years experience. Um, so these are emerging leaders, people who have very targeted um, and pinpointed questions that they want to ask. So it, they could be product managers. Uh, they could be people who are, you know, in content, but then want to pivot and move into product. Um, there are people who want to do complete career switches. People want to get into tech. People want to just have a, so, so that's why we, we picked our verticals very carefully. And, and since we've launched, we also know what, what the insights are that people want. So we've got product, uh, career management, marketing, and business mm -hmm. and leadership. And a lot of the questions that are coming in, I mean, we know there's, you know, massive shifts that have taken place in, in the world of work is everything from, you know, navigating um, remote work to, to pivoting my career and making it work for me uh, based on my current skill set to, you know, how do I, how do I position myself uh, again, like, you know, for, for, for a specific market and, uh, and, 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 and the know-how they need is both domain as well as sometimes local expertise. So, so that's one of the beauties of the platform that we are able to offer a, a global pool of experts. So, so you know, on, on Wisley, each expert has their flag there because one of the, uh, the feedback we got from consumers was it would be very useful to know if they, if they are able to relate to my situation, if they're from my part of the world. And a lot of our users are from nascent ecosystems because um, these ecosystems don't have, I'm talking like Pakistan or Nigeria, you know, they, they're up and coming and they don't have access uh, the, way, the way these mature ecosystems have uh, inbuilt, you know, uh, there, there's Slack, there's all these communities right. that are coming up, right? So, so that's, that's a, a lot of our people are from, uh, our users uh, are from there and they appreciate the fact that they have access to a head of marketing of Google or MD of Twitter, like just like that. And, and, and it's affordable, you know, so. Right. Super, super focused about uh, teams and, and, and domains. And uh, as you said, typically startups and also professionals who are looking to getting to know more or, or even switching um, yeah. careers, right? And in, in terms of geographies, uh, you said it would, it would be important and um, of course to act uh, Kind of the global uh, mindset, so think global and uh, act uh, local. I didn't say this for a very long time, so <laughs> good to <laughs> remind you. And um, uh, is there any specific reasons where you are trying to activate more the community? Are you just observing uh, how how are you acquiring new uh, members of 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 the? Weasley community. So what is kind of your thesis in terms of uh, geography? So geography so, wise, uh, we are, like we said, you know, we are across right now focused mainly broadly categorizing Asia as, as a side right. of it and then Europe and US right? by each country uh, from a geography standpoint of view. And, uh, the, and then we are kind of learning through the way uh, the user behaves, you know, it's not, usually it is not um, exactly the same. So, you know, like an, the, the user in Asia would not always behave the same way as somebody in the US or in the European market. So the learning is definitely uh, coming through on a day-to-day -day basis when you're trying to build a community 
that the way you uh, acquire users might not be a straightforward game that, okay, how you kind of bring them on board. Uh, but what we are definitely doing right now, since it's a very focused, as Pooja mentioned, uh, on the early and mid startups. So right now the focus is to kind of uh, work with a lot of startup ecosystems uh, who, uh, and like you said, people, there are a lot of startups who are not always necessarily just raising money from VC or, or a bootstrap or have just raised a very small amount from angels and they need access and they want to fast track their growth. And that's kind of one areas that we are constantly focusing on to bring them through partnerships. And, and a lot of work is kind of happening in behind to kind of build a partnership stack. Um, and coming from a very product-led businesses, one, we are very focused on building things which will be product-led growth. Um, so, you oh, know, it's cool. not overnight, uh, but it takes time, um, you know, in, including all the partnership work that's happening, but we are trying to bring all of it on a very, very close product-led growth and not kind of trying to just get users somehow to figure out. So everything, every growth so far is fully organic um, that we are trying to build on the platform. Awesome. This is important because uh, as, as you have mentioned, uh, Wisley is now uh, almost uh, a year, right? So uh, there is still, a, uh, there are still, in the, you are still in the, in the search uh, mode uh, with, with a good part. That's a stage uh, of, a, of a startup. And, and that's why I asked the thesis because, of course, then uh, the users and, and the community will tell us uh, what they what they need, and uh, of course, Samir and Puja will will do their best to adapt to what what the users and uh, and, and the, the community members are are telling uh, them yep. that they need. Right. Um, Great. And uh, how does it work uh, nowadays? So how would I get access to, to Weasley? Uh, what would look like? I, I know because I'm, I'm part of, of the community, but for the ones listening, uh, how, how does that work? So you as mean user, how to get access to the product? As a user or an expert? Uh, yes, so let's start maybe with with a user. I'm a startup founder or I'm a professional and I would like to, I'm having some issues or I'm not entirely happy with uh, how LinkedIn is working. I'm looking for another channels and other platforms to serve my needs. Uh, my, my, maybe my network is also not very uh, extensive in, in that industry. And I heard about Weasley from another co-founder or, or because I, I listened to the podcast and I, I want to, to know yeah. how, how I can um, take advantage or, or leverage the, the, the resources that Weasley uh, has to offer me. So what, what I would do next? So it's a sure. very simple process. You uh, get on Weasley.app, our website. You join Weasley as a user and you click on join Weasley and um, uh, you, get, you get on the dashboard, you search for experts based on your, or on your profile, we'll already showcase you on your dashboard things that we think that you're interested okay. in. Um, and, uh, and then you can go and search for experts based on their area of expertise, their country. Um, and, and once you find the expert, the profile is there, you schedule a call or you can message the expert as well to see you know, what, uh, if you want to try out and see how they answer the question, and um, and and voila, you're done. You you make your payment for the uh, for for uh, booking the meeting. So that this is it's really important that that I I, I want to tell the listener that uh, when you're scheduling a call, it's a guaranteed meeting because we have the calendars integrated into the platform. So uh, one of the biggest problems is you can say I want to meet X Y Z from. Google, Twitter, Amazon, and they'll be like, yeah, yeah, in two weeks, we'll get in touch with you, you know, request the call, we'll, we'll, we'll find nice. the time. On Wisley, the times are there. And so like it's, today is Tuesday, you could very well find a slot on Thursday for, for someone pretty important and, and get, get it done. And that's the urgency of it, right? That you can yep. get it done right now. Uh, it's quick, it's a three-step, you click and you're done. And everything happens on the platform, it's video, um, and and uh, seamless in that sense, uh, we like to think. Screen <laughs> share. Yeah, you yeah, can even screen share screen. now, and 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 lot many more things will come to make your life more easy. So 
Nice. And like Pooja mentioned, the messaging part is pretty attractive because it's one is to one. Uh, you might not always want to set up a call. Um, then the messaging feature works pretty well. And uh, yeah, and, and stay tuned. We are coming up with uh, asynchronous video interactions uh, wow. starting next month. So That's you can post a question time. and no. get, get a video answer. So, so we're ensuring that if you have a problem, or you need a connection, it happens on Wizzly, period. Now, whether it happens through a asynchronous mode or a messaging or a one-on-one -on -one call, it's up to the user on how they want to get it done based on this problem statement. This, this is really, really interesting because uh, it helps me a lot and it's not the most professional tool. It doesn't help as well to use WhatsApp audio. Uh, when I want to share something quickly and don't write an email, uh, you know, or even set up a call, I think that's especially uh, in in the kind of areas that that we in, in what we that we play, uh, it's difficult to you know uh, ensure that we respect our time and energy, and uh, at the same time we still want to help as much people as we can. So and, and sometimes it's 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 kind of a nightmare to navigate and definitely just having this option to record the video and answer it quickly. I think it's different when we write down an email or we or a message or we just say something. Uh, it, it's, it comes with what is kind of the accent or not the accent, what I the, the, the tonality or the, what yeah. we want to say. The, the, the message is different when, when we say it. Uh, verbally instead of uh, in a written format and it depends also on the topic right imagine that is because of a conflict of uh, with a teamwork or how to manage a situation uh, uh, around the weekly or discussing a specific topic uh, if we just write down an email uh, explaining uh, how, how to deal with that uh, it, it might not sound uh, nice right so i i see the the innovation and, and the value out of there okay cool and and now let's look into the other side of the of the marketplace so uh, i would love to join Weasley to help the the startup founders that are out there uh, i'm an expert in a very specific uh, area and uh, and that matches with with your categories so what what would i need to do and uh, how does that work for me Sure. Um, I think for experts is very simple. You basically got on the, as like we just said, you have to apply. It is not open. Uh, you, we have an onboarding process. We have um, internal criteria. We know which expertise for what domains currently on the platform are required. Um, we are also having our own algorithm to measure the kind of demand and supply kind of a ratio because, you know, we want experts who join the platform also to be uh, having real interactions and are, are uh, subject to their time availability as well. And um, so that's why uh, onboarding of expert is something which we take in very seriously. Uh, most of the experts also have a founder call. So uh, they would connect either with Puja or myself or couple awesome. um, uh, for a very quick 10 minutes chat to kind of understand, get to the uh, crux of it, what we're trying to build. And we also learn from them on what, where, and how they think about it, right? So, so that's the kind of process. It usually takes um, anywhere between five days to a couple of weeks at max uh, for us to kind of close the process to onboard an expert. And uh, yeah, I mean, we have almost now nearing 300 experts on the platform and there are more on the pipeline that we've been uh, doing our process with. So, but yeah, we're always, always looking for uh, the, some of the best brains to work. And, um, uh, and, and yeah, it's, it's pretty uh, exciting that the process we've set, it took us four months to build the process, but the process now is working very well for us. Awesome. Sounds great. And uh, I'll say to kind of concludes a little bit how, how, how Weasley uh, works. Uh, it's really understanding a little bit better the, the business model. So uh, you already have a specific thesis about how it will work. Uh, how, how, how is it working now? You mean uh, how the product is working or? 
No, in terms of the business model, I mean, uh, oh. how are you making money? Right? Uh, with, oh, with, uh, okay. Yeah. Nice, good question. <laughs> in the context context of where the world I was a little bit more uh, polite the way I asked. It. <laughs> uh, no, so basically, as as uh, I think Puja highlighted, we're a marketplace. Uh, we have both the sides. Uh, so we are currently users pay for the time and the calls that they uh, uh, get onto with the experts on the platform, or they are taking time with the one-on-one -on -one messaging. Um, we will be launching uh, more of a community-driven SaaS platform uh, once we launch our video Q&A uh, tool next month. And that will be the next level for the users because then they can be part of a paid community which will go far and wide beyond just uh, having a one-on-one -on -one calls because um, you know, you know, there'll be many more uh, product-driven opportunities for them to connect. Uh, these includes everything from call transcripts and all, all the different tools, so allowing them to make it more structured. The engagement with the one-on-one -on -one calls also becomes far more structured. Um, from the expert side, uh, currently we we are looking at getting uh, more structured for the experts to see the value. Uh, you know, and like you rightly said, if you you know if you are an expert and you are putting your busy schedule, you have a very small one or two hours a week that you are slotting it out. Uh, it would be great for you to see a few automated processes. Your calls are getting automatically transcribed. You are getting the history. You are able to create exactly. insights and, and some of the tools that uh, we make it very easy. So I think those tools are what we are launching for the experts, uh, again, going live next month, uh, making their life far more easier. Uh, and eventually opening doors for experts starting October that uh, now they can also pay a small amount on the platform, but they'll be able to uh, get larger reach through our partner networks so that they can actually, there are a lot of the experts who are building, like this is a full-time uh, job for them, right? Like they're basically consultants and they have certain expertise. Right. Uh, so for them, we will be opening what we call creating creators, or the professional creators. So we'll be opening doors for them um, for that. that is. So that's that's how the platform makes money. Do you, you want to add something, Pooja, or? No, just, I wanted to just say that, you know, this whole creator thing and professional creators, we do have a, a tool that we're building for, uh, for the experts to create effortlessly. Uh, what, one of the things that we, we feel right now uh, on, on, on platforms, um, that are for professional and just generally creation is, is is just such a cumbersome process and takes up so much time um yeah. from so we want uh, and and that's why our approach is also uh micro uh so it's audio only uh audio and video eventually but it's like you can just literally again two clicks create your thing upload it um and nice. and it will be published each one gets their own url um so the whole creation process creatives we take care of everything you know and it's just mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day we know that uh, this knowledge is only in, in in the brains of a few people but it needs to come out also in in a certain way and 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 um we do want to share and democratize this knowledge and to us we look at the micro insights and the creation tool um, as as one of the pillars in which we are going to share this knowledge so if you look at uh, the three pillars that make up Wisley's uh, platform, um, of course, it's 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 the, the the expert content that comes through insights as well as um, the one-on-one -on -one conversations are, are are integral to it, and then of course the community that's built around it. And it's actually very interesting for us because it's a marketplace, and we have two sides that we're dealing with. So for right. for for us, that's been one of the biggest learnings in terms of um, you know what people actually want, and and on the expert side how much uh, they actually want to give and reach, uh, but they want to reach the right people in a targeted, uh, efficient way. Right. 
and that's also one of the main challenges of a, of building a marketplace it's, it's really uh, we have two customers right so we need to understand what's the developer position for yeah. the experts and developer position for it's like for, an orchestra but if you uh, you know <laughs> once you get it right i, I think it works but it, it takes a lot of practice <laughs> and uh, what to build first and uh, it yeah. with what speed right if we have too many experts but uh, no users wanted to consuming uh, their time maybe they will lost interest uh, if we have uh, too many us users but no experts and they are not available to have any calls with them it doesn't work as well so uh, so really managing supply and demand uh, in a orchestrated wor uh, um, way as you said which is uh, is really really important okay awesome i think that's Everyone uh, that is listening to us already got uh, how Weasley uh, works. So let, let's try to extract some of the lessons learned uh, during your path with Weasley, but also feel free to tune in with your previous experience that is uh, amazing in, in both of your cases. Uh, and Puja, you are also seeing a lot of, um, or you have, have been seeing and, and you keep seeing a lot of startups um, in the region and there are a lot of lessons that you can also uh, share and some you from from your previous ventures uh, there is also a lot of lessons um, uh, that that you can share that uh, are not included yet in in this year uh, of of Whistly. so building the the founding team is one of those uh, topics that uh, any founder uh, has some worries about especially when we got into that point that uh, how much time is available for each of them? How much are we putting? Do we have the right chemistry? Uh, are we covering uh, the, the different skills that we need in order to build a startup? At the same time, if we have all the skills that we need, uh, we might have a, a very large uh, founding team. So from my understanding, you also had another um, co-founder so let me know a little bit the thought process behind building your founding team for, for Weasley and, and some of the lessons learned for the ones who are listening to us and are going through uh, this moment of creating their uh, founding teams. Sure. No, always. I think uh, the founding team itself is a, is a very, uh, I call it, it's a very critical decision for a founder, right? And, and how you want to build, uh, what kind of people you want to work with. Um, well, there are online a lot of articles, a you know, lot of uh, podcasts, I'm sure, on people talking about what works and what is not working. Um, yeah. uh, I think the, but it's always each to its own, uh, you know, different characteristics, personalities. So, so the first thing is to know your own personality is the most important thing, uh, how you are and how you like to operate. Um, very early on, you know, I, I because I have access to so many entrepreneur friends and community around, uh, some entrepreneurs they are they love like doing everything on their own. And so so you know that's the way they are built. Um, nothing is right or wrong. Okay, there are enough successes there and there are enough failures there. Um, but having done a few, couple of my ventures and and being a solo founder um, also has its. Uh, drawbacks, right? Which is, uh, you know, every responsibility is yours. Uh, um, so success and failure, both are yours. Uh, so you you always want, in, a, in and the journeys are never short, right? You always think, oh, this yeah. might be a great exit in four years, but it never happens. <laughs> and 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 your, your like journey becomes lonely. So you always want uh, people around that you can share with um, being such a lonely journey. And um, so that's why co-founders are, are uh, very important if you can find the right ones. So number one, never hurry. Uh, don't try to get a co-founder because you need a co-founder. Um, you have to spend a lot of time. Uh, you should, uh, like in my case, a couple of, um, and I knew each other for 20 years being engineering mates. So, so it was never, we had never worked, but we know each other. There's, there's a mutual respect, there's understanding. And there's a complete opposite skill set, right? Uh, he's a pure product guy, UI, UX, and, and a product it's user experience guy. Um, and, and I have a very business role, and I have a very clear focus that, that I'm the front-end guy who's going to investor relations, fundraise, product vision. So I'm, I'm more on the business side. He's more on the product side. Um, so the overlaps, the, the least they are, the least friction it is. 
eat, right? And and it's very important, right? Uh, that you find a right uh, partner who you respect. Um, also, the second point is if if you are a founder uh, who wants to, uh, you know, some people are okay to kind of um, say that okay, I'm, I want equal partners. Uh, some people are okay to say okay, I'm going to lead it, but I need co-founders for particular departments, right? And and that's the way I personally like to do things because that's my nature. I like to lead it, but I I know that I know very well what I'm not good at. Right. And, and I knew it like I, I'm not good at that or I'm not good at marketing. That's not my forte. And, and so the second biggest void was marketing. And, and you know, even before we met Puja, there were we would be me and couple were talking to a few people and we were looking at it. In fact, one of my discussion with Puja is, does she have any other references in the industry? That's how we used to talk. And, and that kind of led to one, led to other. And then you kind of spend more time to realize that, OK, is this the right treatment? Is this? What and and the good part where then when we started talking to Puja is that okay what's her uh, role and where is where is she coming from right is she looking at like a more of a role is she also good in technology and she's also going to overlook here and there are spillovers but but we realize there is no spillover so you know it's a the, the great part here is that everyone has their silo so nobody has overlaps so you kind of have your own way to work. But at the same time, you are kind of a, a team which works together uh, in overall departments. So at least you have a fallback, right? So if, if I feel like, okay, you know, today my fundraise meeting was pathetic, um, you know, I have someone to go to and talk, right? Uh, right. Otherwise, it's like, okay, just sulk, <laughs> have a glass of beer or, or a whiskey and just die. <laughs> so, okay. so I think the beauty of having... Uh, Finding co-founders is not an overnight job, you know, so, and, and people term it, to me, co-founder is not a title, okay? I, I tell everyone, okay? It's not a title. It's a responsibility it's, for number yeah. one. It's it's a big responsibility. Um, and so people should not take it for, because it sounds cool to be a co-founder. Um, trust me, when things go up north and down south, <laughs> a lot of things change, a lot of equation changes. So... So don't jump for it. And and second is that uh, you as a team, you need to be clear who is driving what and who is taking the head of sitting in front of the business, who is taking the responsibility. So in this case, I'm clear, right? If if it fails, internally, we'll talk, we'll fight, we'll argue. But the face is mean. It didn't work. Wesley, Samir failed. It didn't work. Of course, we all are a team. We all are facing and we all are doing everything. So, so you need to know what you are ready to take. If I'm not, like I don't want to take responsibility or oh, technology failed, it's couple's problem or, or somebody else's problem. Then That's I need to get them in the forefront, right? Then I have to take a back seat uh, in most of the things. So I think that's how as a co-founder, um, you know, it has to work. And for us, that, is, that was my goal day one when I started. Um, that's how I reached out to couple. And at the right time we were talking to Puja uh, as well, because we knew exactly what roles we wanted people for um, at day one and, and what kind of people. Um, so that's that's how it works. And and but there are nonetheless, we all have heard enough failure stories. So <laughs> so we, we are yet to go to south and to north. Uh, so but we, we really at the moment, we really feel that we are all equipped. And, and started learning each other's behavior patterns to say that, okay, we know who behaves, what, and where we come from. So I think that really helps, to be very honest. Very good insights. Pooja, you wanted to... Yeah, I think he said so much. I'm just going to, yeah. like, so, so, so many good points that I, I don't have much to add. But the main thing I would say is, of course, complementary skill sets. That's the obvious that, you know, each person brings mm -hmm. something unique to the table. But people underestimate uh, maturity and, and just cultural view of, of you know, how you want to execute things. Because if you're not on the same page as, as, as each other, uh, you know, we know startups need to work at a certain scale. You only have a certain period of time to prove your PMF. Uh, but at the same time, you, know, you, need to be, you need to be aligned on that vision because some people want to do it like at work 24 seven and nonstop. And some people are like, you know, and, and that's something that I really appreciate that um, that we're a team that uh, 
um, is mature in that sense that we're mature founders. I'm going to say that without revealing our age. And um, <laughs> also that... <laughs> 20s, mean, right? Uh, sorry? 20s? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, just, just, just touching 20s. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and, and I think the, that brings to the table a level of honesty and we're just, we're all not the fake it till we make it type. In, internally as well so if if we if we really feel like oh my god like this is not working and we need to switch right away you know we 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 we, we all uh have that level of comfort and confidence to say and 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 just change you know right away without taking it personally that i suggested this and it was really shit and it's not my fault or you know like and 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 um yeah the 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 rise together and fall together is, is is one of those things that comes with maturity i feel because otherwise you are like constantly like but that was not on my kpi and it's not my problem and i did this and i did that and, and yeah sometimes you know that that would happen but overall i feel that i i, I feel that that's bit, that's a big thing that would probably hold a team together because the moment you start siloing yourself so much and think that oh my job is this and uh, I'm at my KPI, but I'm not going to help my my co-founder or point out something that's really obvious to me that's not working, you know, uh, because it's his idea and he's, you know, I, so I have nothing to lose. It's That's a really bad immature attitude to have. And, I, and I've seen teams kind of disintegrate because of these, you know, uh, uh, sometimes the ego comes in the way. Sometimes mm -hmm. the, they just don't know how to navigate these situations because they're like, "But I didn't do this, so why, why, why should I? Why is it? Why, why, why is this, you know, uh, affecting me?" But at the end of the day, if you all are working and aligned to a certain vision, it is your responsibility to speak up or you know offer a helping hand or 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 just work really as 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 a team, you know, not not um, in a silo. Absolutely. Amazing uh, insights. It's it, we we talk a lot about this, but it's still uh, an art. Uh, definitely, as I like to say, there is the science part. There are the fundamentals. That's what we discuss, and then the the execution of that. It's it's really the art, and uh, and that's why I, I love to see high performing teams, right? And and we know that even those high performing teams are not uh, high performing teams all the time. There are ups and downs on on those teams. There are there are, yeah. there are stages of maturity of of those teams, and I think that's that's definitely a lot to do. And uh, I think that we will see uh, founding teams investing more and more uh, on the process of of building uh, their own teams. And there are professionals out there nowadays that uh, can also help with that. Of course, in in the beginning, it's it's difficult to pay for all those uh, services. But I think that a little bit later on, especially at the leadership team level, uh, it really helps to have someone who is able to to play the mediator role and the facilitator uh, role. Especially that now you are transitioning from a founding into a leadership team, from maybe two or three people to seven uh, people, and that transition and again. Uh, those are the founders and these are the members of the leadership team. Uh, again, they need to come up together as only one team uh, instead of uh, two teams. But great insights. Let's jump into, into another topic that uh, founders uh, keep founders awake uh, at night, which is the, uh, the fundraising the process. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, let's let's not go through the the typical uh, stuff. But um, you both uh, have experience with with that. What what would you guys would like to highlight from from ex your experience that is important in fundraising? And of course, we will not be able to cover everything. It's, there is not enough time. Yeah. But uh, yeah. yeah, no, no. I think in the interest of time, I would say fundraising is uh, it's critical. But at the same time, you need to be very focused on how much and when to raise. Um, you know, you, you raise early, you have issues, you, you raise late, you have issues. Um, uh, but, but most of the time, point, uh, with now that having raised uh, enough in the previous uh, venture and now trying to get to the next, I think my biggest learning would be to find the, what kind of investors in terms of my uh, psychology or the way the company is and as co-founders, they work, so you have to be patient and find the right investor. 
at the same time, you also need to find what, when to get the right investors in, right? You, you might be early, you might don't want to pressure, you are still not a PMF. And I think my internal, we have so many discussions and the, all the time we keep doing it is PMF, 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 PMF. That's right? the holy grail right? of Wesley. Just... <laughs> yeah, so, so I'm, I'm, uh, we are also hell bound that if we don't have it, any kind of fundraise, I mean, and I'm, I, I'm out there, there are a lot of amazing people who can raise amazing capital, uh, but PMF will always come and bite you at any stage, whether you are at early stage, mid stage, series A, B, C, D, it can come and bite you any stage. It will always come and bite you because if your product doesn't go out and you try and create stories after stories, it's not going to work. Um, so it's better to raise less and, and take more time. Um, we are now matured enough and learned it hard way. We are not in a race. Who comes first? It's the race. Can you build something credible? And can you build a product company which lasts? Uh, whether you kind of do it in four years or you do it in eight years. Uh, but you have to build something which is credible. I mean, and maybe after two years, if you do another podcast, you want someone to say, hey, I got this on Wisley and, and I tell you what an amazing product it is. I think that is far more achieving to us rather than just saying, oh, we raised 25 million or we are the coolest kid in town which are raising money after money. So I think that's our philosophy if you really want to know about fundraising. So we're taking it one step at a time. I know that yeah. the majority is comfortable. Sorry to interrupt you, Pooja. Uh, the, the majority is comfortable with the expression, but just for the ones who are searching on Google, uh, PMF product market fit. Uh, Pooja, feel free to go <laughs> for <laughs> Yes, no, I mean, sorry about that. That's fine. I mean, it's just, it's, uh, it, it, I, I have to say, like, it's like do fundraise when the time is right. Make sure your foundation is there, the plumbing works. You know, don't go start telling stories uh, and 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 making stuff up. And I, I said that we are, you know, we really believe in, in in launching when we really have and 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 going out there when when we've created a, a product. And we're, you know, I mean, having said that, obviously we're at the stage where we do we tweak, but we tweak to what to the user at the end of the day, right? Where like this is what they want, and if we can make it better for them, the experience, then that's going to make our core value proposition. Um, better for them and, 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 and get more users. So, so yeah, so, so do it at the right time and make sure your plumbing works, make sure that everything, your foundation is set and, 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 and you can go to the next level. That's uh, what I would say about fundraising. Great points and, and uh, great summary. Uh, thanks for, uh, for that. Definitely interesting. And so we could do an entire podcast with, with both of you uh, about that and uh, especially you have seen a lot of uh, startups with uh, with Antler. Uh, it might be a, a good show uh, in the future <laughs> to to have you guys back to to go okay. deeper into another topics. And uh, so that's the moment that we got into. We get into the last um, segment of the show where I ask a quick question and you give me a a, a brief uh, answer when when possible. Uh, we'll start with two kind of reflective uh, questions. Uh, let's go uh, with, if you would have the opportunity to have a, a coffee uh, with yourself uh, at the beginning of Weasley, uh, what advice would you offer to your uh, younger self? Pooja, would you like to start? Sure. Um, don't be so fixed on a plan, you know, uh, go with the flow. Take the, I, I wish I'd taken the leap earlier and created something of my own earlier. Sammy? Oh, to my younger self, uh, I, I would say don't uh, overstress uh, because how much ever you stress it out, uh, things take its own time and, and they take its own way about uh, delivering and you're not running the race. So see if you're, that's what I would say to my younger self. So be calm and, and you'll get there. What are you the most proud of on, on your journey so far, Pooja? Um, I think reinventing myself and career a few times. I've, I've been in, in some way communi in communications all my life, but it's been different lanes, I would say. Love it, Samir. 
Uh, what I'm most Same. proud of, I think uh, yeah. I'm, I'm most proud of uh, in the journey so far is how we kind of put our heads down and really trying to achieve the near product market fit and and having a team which is supporting uh, changes, which practically at times we even do it every week um, to kind of ensure. And so I think that's really, really commendable. Uh, it's very stressful, but commendable to kind of go through. No. Worst advice ever received, Pooja. Yeah, I, I had, I had, I had a tough one. Like I was, uh, I had a few, but then I was like, um, I would say, probably um, stick to the job. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, seriously, is is that the worst one? Okay, uh, worst <laughs> advice ever. I think. To me, it was, it's always the same. Every few years I get an advice, which is, don't you dare now to start again. So, so, so that's the advice I keep getting from quite a few people around, enough, don't start again. <laughs> thank thank but, you for, uh, for having the courage of ignoring it. So, uh, favorite book? Um, I, I couldn't choose one. This, this choosing one is quite difficult. I have two. I have I think in terms of just beautiful prose and just the message, uh, Untamed by Glennon Doyle, um, where it's all about women awakening and going back to their raw self, their natural self. And mm -hmm. then, of course, um, Peter Thiel's Zero to One is like, to me, the Bible of, of uh, startups, you know, and, and the way he describes how you create it and, and, and what it actually means. So that that I read many years ago and, and, and actually sparked my was one of the books that's really got me into it. <laughs> great uh, resources, uh, Samir. Ah, great. Uh, I guess, so the, if you ask the favorite one, I think from a learning point of view, it's been uh, the biography of Steve Jobs. I think that's the only book ever that I read in, I think I finished in one and a half days, like seven hours a day, I, I was reading it. So I've never, I'm not a great reader, but I think that was the only one a lot of learnings so that's why I, I like it because you know you kind of go through the entire journey from failure to su success to failure and then getting back to success and still seeing so many gaps uh, other than that yeah so i think the other smart books are like five dysfunctions of a team i think it's phenomenal i it highly is, recommend yeah, yeah it's, it's just the book is just insane when you have to take decisions and i think it was uh, great book that helped me when I was creating my last company and scaling up our teams. It was very, very helpful. So I think that's what I would say. Favorite movie or series, if you prefer? Uh, Game of Thrones and movie Godfather trilogy. Sami? Wow. I'm a spy movie fan, so anything in around there, whether it's a series of the new Apple Apple TV series of Tehran, is a very awesome one that I follow. And uh, of course, uh, movies around Argo and Bridge of Spies and Top Gun and, and all of those are some of my favorite ones that I, and the motivational ones, of course, you have to go and watch Pursuit of Happiness. Uh, I think I've done five times uh, different stages of life but it just helps you stay on the course basically <laughs> well, right. and finally favorite podcast excluding this one mm -hmm. um i listen to um alex lieberman's founders journal um uh, yeah it's 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 short it's to the point um and it, it's it's basically how to build tools to build and grow your your company and for longer um, Sundays, uh, where you really want to go in depth into uh, a bit of philosophy and a bit of uh, decision making, thinking, um, Shane Parrish's Knowledge Project. Love it. <laughs> Samir. Wow. Okay. I'm the bad one. I, I'm not a super podcast guy, but uh, <laughs> I guess. You will be that I've done after this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I surely should. <laughs> but uh, I guess from a tech side, of course, from I, I get a lot of stuff from the A16Z podcast in terms of uh, a lot of domain depths. 
that I kind of get uh, to understand. Uh, impact theory is the other ones that I go for more on the, I li like some of the stuffs around the mind power and, and how they kind of, um, I think there was one on the breathing one, which was just phenomenal on how breathing impacts our lives. And I never thought of that. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So I think those are exciting parts for me. I, I like to go on podcasts, which are kind of wacky in nature and, and not the regular stuff. I, I'll, so so that's, that's what I listen to. Puja and Sunny, thank you so much for making the time. It was really a pleasure to host you both on the show. Wish you all the best with Weasley and you are always welcome to come back to, to share the progress and to share more uh, lessons learned and to have a little bit more time of covering another topics of uh, this uh, amazing journey that is to be a founder. Uh, thanks again for, for joining us today. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank really, thanks for having us. Uh, and that was... Uh, uh, a really, I would say, very smooth flowing discussion. Everything I thought, you know, was very natural. It was like we were having coffee <laughs> with you. <laughs> Thank you very much. And to Thank our community, you. thanks for being on, on that side. Uh, we keep bringing you the best of the best and trying to make your life a little bit easier uh, as you start and scale your company. See you soon and keep scaling. Yeah.